Hey there, happy Friday to you. My name is Julie Hirschberg. I am the owner at Reactive Physical Therapy and Wellness. And so happy to join you live today um, in our Reactive Facebook page to talk about some of the things that we've been learning over the last few weeks. At Reactive, our mission is to help people with neurologic disorders recover movement, strength, confidence, and to do this in a way that is truly brain changing um, in a recovery way, promoting neuroplasticity. And one of the ways we look to reach our mission is to reach out to other healthcare providers to talk about what we're doing and to share that with people. And um, we do this through a lot of education, a lot of courses, and I have already been prepping for a course that is coming up in October, actually. Um, and I'm very excited that it's now live and it's called Cultivating Central Nervous System Connectivity a guide for disorders where that those connections have gone awry, like functional disorders, central pain, dystonia. And part of a big part of the commonality in those disorders is impairments in the sensory map, impairments in the not just in the ability to feel sensation, but to localize where that sensation is. So uh, this is something I spent a lot of uh, time on myself learning because it's quite fascinating. It's not something we learn in school. And um, so I'm sharing what I'm learning with you all. And I think this is especially helpful, something I've been reflecting on a lot. Um, if you have ever feel felt a little stuck maybe in your progressions, maybe feel like you're missing something. Um, and especially with some of the more complex disorders, that piece may be sensory. I think as physical therapists, we tend to live in the motor realm of things, the muscle realm of things, and we can leave off actually training the sensory system. Or we might start and not have a good way to progress systematically. So I've definitely felt like that um, in, in the past. And I have realized more and more when I start to train it early on, when I can progress systematically, people get better and faster. And it's Turns out this is actually the case in the literature too. So what we'll talk about today is what is this sensory training? In particular, we're gonna talk sensory mapping or remapping. What is some of the evidence here? And I got a little cheat sheet for you, putting it step-by-step. Step. I made this for myself because I needed a step-by-step step and I want to share it with you. So, um, uh, this actually, I'll, I'll put a link in there. You can download it for free because I feel like everybody should have a little cheat sheet for this. I certainly need one. So let's talk about sensory remapping. What is this exactly? And the way I've always thought about it, because I love the homunculus, I think about it as um, reshaping the representation of body parts in the homunculus, as well as improving that secondary somatosensory cortex where things get integrated. So um, if you think about some of those um, studies, we've seen this in dystonia, we've seen this in central pain, um, and in some of the functional sensory disorders. Um, if you look at the cortex, um, probably a prime example of this is in animal studies, where um, if uh, if two digits are bound together, you start getting a smudging in the cortex and less representation of the individual digits. So um, that's that's what I think about when I see that somebody has a localization deficit in sensation, that those areas in the cortex are smudged. Um, instead of seeing distinct fingers and parts of the fingers, um, the whole hand is activated, for example. 
So when I think of sensory mapping, I think of reshaping that homunculus or de-smudging it. Is that a word? De-smudging? I'm going to make it a word. De-smudging the, the, the cortex. And in particular, this is beneficial if somebody has a problem with localization. So of course you need to test that. So two-point discrimination is our kind of gold standard test. We have a lot of norms for different parts of the body based on what would be considered um, a regular uh, ability for, for two-point discrimination. And we find that two-point discrimination, this has been shown over and over in the literature, is impaired. It's impaired in, um, in people with low back pain. It's impaired in people who've had pain for a long time. Um, it's impaired in frozen shoulder. It is impaired in dystonia. And what we're finding clinically is it's often, often impaired in functional movement disorders. So we got to test it. And then I would say until the last few years, I didn't really know what to do with that information. Now, in the pain neuroscience literature, there's a lot out there now, a lot on graded exposure or graded motor imagery that takes you through some of this progression. Um, and I, I find that literature very helpful and very applicable to um, other populations. Same goes for the sensory mapping. And so I want to highlight a couple of pieces of literature that really um, started me down this journey. Um, and actually, I'm going to start with the CSM presentation. You're going to have to look this up. It was uh, two years ago. Um, Adrian Lau, if you haven't seen him speak, you ought to. He is uh, really engaging, entertaining, and so knowledgeable. Um, and he does a lot of education in um, the field of pain and neuroscience. Uh, so he, if, if, you, if he's on the CSM ticket, you got to go see him. Um, one year, we all of our group kind of followed him around um, and learned a ton. So he did a talk called The Frozen Shoulder Has a Brain, which I love that title. Um, and everything has a brain. So um, that that definitely got me there. But he presented some of their studies um, and in particular looked at a couple of small studies where they did what they called central nervous system training for people with frozen shoulder and for prolonged periods of pain. And they did a couple of different things. One was mirror training. We won't talk about that today. But one was a sensory mapping. And um, essentially, they drew a grid. Um, if you imagine a grid on your shoulder and localizing like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, um, and started training that localization ability. So they had impairments in two point discrimination. They started training by having the person identify where they were being um, were being stimulated, and they got a lot better. Their frozen shoulder got better. Um, pretty awesome. Um, by the way, I, I got a little reference list. I'll pop these in the comments um, for you because I think these studies are are pretty interesting. So that was kind of the start of my journey to look at the sensory mapping a, a little bit more. And this, again, was in um, the orthopedic literature, in the pain neuroscience literature. Recently, um, uh, Adrian Lau and a group from Spain published a um, their protocol for a clinical trial called a central nervous system focused treatment approach for people with frozen shoulder and a protocol for the randomized clinical trial by the way also free full text so i'll put that in the in the um in the chat for you so they actually put step by step how they were progressing the central nervous system focused approach for sensory mapping. Brilliant. I love when people publish their step by step because honestly, I've been making it up. I've been doing my grid training, I've been progressing it, but I hadn't quite put that into a systematic framework. And they have, which I have taken here. So um, that that study is not. Um, completed. The protocol is published. So the evidence here is from a couple of small trials, but 
now the randomized controlled trial is being done based out of Spain. So to be, uh, to be determined what the results are. But I will tell you clinically in our practice, uh, we're seeing results with this. So um, let's talk about this step-by-step. Step. I'm not gonna do every single one, but I just want you to see in general what this progression looks like. So, um, so it goes through stages here. And by the way, this is from the protocol and I've put in it, put in, how we're clinically, how I'm clinically doing it as well. Um, but the first stage is tactile discrimination training. Um, stage two is localization with different types of stimulus. Stage three is graphesthesia, one of my favorite things. Um, and stage four is graphesthesia advanced, I would say. And then stage five is graphesthesia really advanced um, or part three. So there's a one, two, three for graphesthesia. I'll tell you what those are. Um, so in the tactile discrimination training, by the way, they're, they propose in their protocol these taking one to two weeks. What I found clinically is that depends on the person. Um, so somebody recently that I was working with went through these stages like one week at a time. They graduate to the next stage when they get 80% accuracy. So in, in the grid training, essentially you break up the area into nine parts. Now they did this in the shoulder. I've done it everywhere. Um, but primarily in the lower body. So um, I've been doing it in the leg. Um, we use the uh, eraser end of a pencil. So you kind of have a pretty standard um, local uh, tactile input um, and it's soft. Um, and then we show them what that is, have them take in that sensory localization information and then do it without visual input. Now in that first stage, we may actually have to use a mirror to um, improve the accuracy there. And I have done that before. Um, so for all the stages though, we take a person through being able to localize it with vision to without vision. And, and that's been really helpful. Um, in stage two, we start changing the stimulus. So they actually have a pen cap and a cork. I don't always have a cork, um, but the, the end of a pen and then something bigger. So this happens to be a drum stick because I do have drum sticks. Um, but this is where I've tried many different things with people. Um, and sometimes these are too similar and I have to go to something a little different for people. Um, and I've used golf balls. I've used um, uh, these small little prickle balls that we have at the clinic. So this, I think you can grade and then progress to more similar items. In graphesthesia, we actually are writing letters. And I actually included on here because this was really helpful for me. Um, when you're writing the letter, um, it's helpful to start with something that's continuous so you don't have to take your finger off. Um, I actually use a pen to write the letter. I don't write it, obviously, that no, no ink coming out, but that helps me. So I have continuous letters and numbers that are easy to draw for you. So just a little cheat sheet on that. Um, so you move through graphesthesia and then you move through writing words. Um, so letters to words, um, and then decreasing the size of the letter, changing the orientation of it, altering, alter, altering the speed of how you write the letters. So through all of those, you progress through these five stages. It might take 10 to 12 weeks to do that. Um, it might take less, depending on how quickly that person is picking it up. But when I found this protocol, it really helped me synthesize and put together something in a really progressive way. Do I stick to the exact thing with everybody? No, because it, it doesn't fit everyone and they progress a little bit differently. But is it helpful to have a guidebook? Yes. So we do have this. I'll, I'll pop um, the link into the comments here just as we finish um, so that you can um, try it 
try this graded sensory remapping. And I also at the at the bottom of this download are the references. So you can see those as well. I think it's really important to say, hey, this is based on this work, right? And and give those authors a shout, shout out. Um, so um, there, there you have it. We talked about sensory remapping today, um, what it is, what some of the evidence is for it, and literally like how you do it step by step. So um, I will encourage you to, to download our free handout, try it out, let me know um, how, how it goes. And um, consider too, this is just one little tiny piece of what we're putting together for our next weekend course. So we have a weekend course coming up in October. It's called Cultivating Central Nervous System Connectivity, which is exactly what this is, right? Um, this is a course we typically do in person, but we are taking it online. Um, but it's a full weekend course with myself, Brittany Kim, our orthopedic specialist, and Dr. Alan Wu and Dr. Laura Edinger. So we have the physician standpoint as well. So we can go all the way from diagnosis and medical management through making um, and improving those central nervous system connectivities. We're gonna talk through cases of central pain, uh, functional neurologic disorders and dystonia so that we can look at overlap as well as differences in how we approach those, but really give a framework that you would use to approach all of those types of complex cases, including assessing and treating the sensory deficits. I think they get overlooked. So um, I hope you'll think about joining us for that course. It's October 10th and 11th. Um, I'll pop a link in here so you can check out what that course is all about. And you're going to hear a lot from me because we are in the heat of putting all of that material together. So you'll get a lot of sneak peeks. Um, and, and of course, the course just brings it all together. So that's coming up in October. And actually, tomorrow, we're hopping on a free live webinar. If you're somebody that took the PT exam this week, congratulations, first of all, like that's a huge accomplishment. We're doing a webinar for you if you've recently graduated, um, all about getting hired in 2020, because 2020 has been strange. And it's certainly strange for hiring and getting your dream job and especially in the neuro world. So we've heard from a lot of people, we wanted to help answer questions and just be there for you. So myself, Brittany and Robin Howard from USC, I'm so thankful that she's coming because she really understands some of the bigger healthcare world pieces and comes from hospital university setting, which is so different than being in a private practice. So I'm so excited. Um, we're going to um, have our webinar 9 a.m. Pacific time, um, August 1st. That's tomorrow. That's Friday. Um, I'll hope you join us for that um, or share that with somebody that you know would really benefit from that. Um, and I'll pop a link in here as well. We got lots of links coming your way today. Thank you so much for joining me this Friday. I enjoy so much learning um, new things, um, hearing from you and um, sharing what we're learning together. It's an immense area of support and excitement for me. So thank you so much and have a great day and a great weekend and I'll catch you next week. Bye.